All right, part five, haplogroup X2 DNA. Based on early DNA research from the 90s and early 2000s, some people argue that DNA proves the Book of Mormon is false and that there's only East Asian DNA in the natives of North, Central, and South America. That DNA being haplogroups A, B, C, and D. But the more recent DNA research of the 2000s and up to our present day show that many Native Americans in North America have haplogroup X, or more specifically, haplogroup X2 in their DNA. And haplogroup X2 doesn't come from East Asia. It comes from the Middle East, including Israel. However, some people estimate that the haplogroup X2 DNA arrived in North America tens of thousands of years ago and doesn't correlate with the people of the Book of Mormon, who first arrived only about 4,500 years ago. But this estimate is made from a dating system called phylogenetic dating, which is largely based on the theory that mankind evolved from apes hundreds of thousands of years ago. But this is a theory, not a fact. But there's a much better dating system called pedigree dating, which is based on factual observation studies of the DNA of women, their mothers, their grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-great-grandmothers, and however far back through the generations their DNA can be collected. Pedigree dating estimates the first humans lived only about 6,000 to 6,500 years ago. And the fact-based pedigree dating system supports what the scriptures say about how old mankind really is. When you do the math from the ages and the years recorded in the Bible with the help of some events recorded throughout history, it says the very first man and woman, Adam and Eve, were created by God at approximately 4,000 BC, so only a little over 6,000 years ago. God created them in his image, meaning that humans look like God. They didn't evolve from apes hundreds of thousands of years ago. Also, the Doctrine and Covenants tells us twice that the Earth's temporal existence will only be 7,000 years. We're about 6,000 years into that 7,000 year period, and we're in the last days before the second coming of Jesus Christ and his 1,000 year reign of peace as King of the Earth. So coming back around to haplogroup X2 DNA, it didn't arrive in North America tens of thousands of years ago, because mankind is only about 6,000 years old. Next, do we have any recorded revelations from God about who the descendants of the people of the Book of Mormon are? Yes, we do. And do those people have haplogroup X2 in their DNA? Yes, they do. So let's see who these people are. First, we're going to go to Doctrine and Covenants, sections 28, 30, and 32. In September of 1830, just six months after the Book of Mormon was printed and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was officially created, the Lord told the prophet Joseph Smith to send four particular men to preach the gospel to the Lamanites. These four men were Oliver Cowdery, Peter Whitmer, Parley P. Pratt, and Ziba Peterson. This was the very first mission in the history of the church, and the Lord wanted it to be to the Lamanites. So where did the Lord send them? He sent them to the borders by the Lamanites. Well, what does that mean? It means they were sent to the west border of Missouri, because in 1830, Missouri was the west border of the United States, and on the other side of that border was where the U.S. government had forced the Native Americans to move to after driving them off of their homelands in the eastern United States. This territory west of Missouri had been claimed by the United States, but had not yet been turned into states. So these four missionaries left Fayette, New York, in October of 1830. The autobiography of Parley P. Pratt tells us that during their mission, they preached to three tribes, the Cattaraugus people near Buffalo, New York, the Wyandotte people near Sandusky, Ohio, and the Delaware people just west of the border from Independence, Missouri. They also stayed one night with the Shawnee people before visiting the Delawares, but I'm not sure why they only stayed one night. Maybe the Shawnees just weren't interested in hearing the message. I don't know. But anyway, the Cattaraugus, the Wyandots, the Delawares, 
and the Shawnees all have haplogroup X2 in their DNA. Then in the summer of 1831, in Doctrine and Covenants section 54, the Lord again says that the Native Americans on the west side of the Missouri border are Lamanites. And in Doctrine and Covenants section 57, the Lord calls the Native Americans on the west side of the Missouri border Jews, which is correct because the Lamanites are descendants of the Jews, and he calls the white settlers Gentiles. In January of 1833, the Lord commanded Joseph Smith to write a letter to N. E. Seton, who was the editor of a newspaper in Rochester, New York. In that letter, Joseph told Mr. Seton that the Book of Mormon is a record of the forefathers of our Western tribes of Indians. And again, remember, these Western tribes used to live in the Eastern United States until the U.S. government forced them to move west of Missouri. In early 1841, Joseph Smith wrote a letter at the request of John Wentworth of the Chicago Democrat paper for a friend of his who was writing the history of New Hampshire, where Joseph's family had lived for a few years. In the Wentworth letter, Joseph says that the Book of Mormon is about the aboriginal inhabitants of this country, and that the remnant of these people are the Indians that now inhabit this country. And here's what the country of the United States and its territories looked like in 1841. Later, in August of 1841, some people from the Sac and the Fox tribes came to visit Joseph in Nauvoo, Illinois. By revelation from God, Joseph told the Sac and the Fox people that the Book of Mormon is about their forefathers, and there are promises made in the book concerning them, the descendants. A few years later, in May of 1844, just a month before Joseph was murdered, more people from the Sac and the Fox tribes came to visit him again, and he again told them that the Book of Mormon was about their fathers. And the Sac and the Fox tribes also have haplogroup X2 in their DNA. As far as I'm aware of, haplogroup X2 DNA has not yet been found in natives of Central or South America. But I also haven't found anything written from the Lord and his prophet Joseph Smith saying anything about natives from those lands being Lamanites. I've only found writings where they spoke of natives from North America being Lamanites. That doesn't necessarily mean that all natives from North America are Lamanites. But haplogroup X2 DNA is found in many native tribes of North America, especially those who lived in the eastern half of the United States and Lower East Canada, which is also the main area where the ancient mound builders lived. And haplogroup X2 DNA has also been found in the bones of the ancient mound builders.